time, how much the total that the economy is going to be given by a dump, uh, by dump time, by dump time. So, no, right? Okay, if you are not buying my presentation today, I will give you a um, brief total market methodology use and, and then a relationship between the total infrastructure in the demand and Japanese GDP. And then I'll give you some results for the year in relation to the year 2025 and what extra spend needs to be done on the total infrastructure and paper interest and and how the type of the interest of type of North in Japan and uh, finally some consequences of Japanese GDP. So why did I choose to do this research? I was actually once uh, stranded in Osaka to embark on a conference and it was supposed to be going back to Yokohama because I need to meet Yokohama. But we can't, couldn't actually proceed to Yokohama because it's a typhoon in the middle of the way. So all trains had to stop, all flights to stop. Basically we were stranded in Osaka for about eight and hours before we could actually get back. And this is sort of start me on this whole process of how what implement uh, I lost an entire day of my time for making the fun of the, the time. More in terms of literature, um, we have like a um, more house and we say that the frequency and intensity of typhoon will increase in the future will have effects. Eight of ten uh, most uh, costly natural disasters in Africa are typhoons in Japan. This is more, mostly direct or really and well the same report highlights how typhoons will have an influence on the economy. Now, in doing this research, we, did, we actually established a number of assumptions for this simulation. And this is very important. And the, in trying to do a simulation on climate change, you have to have very clear what it is that you're assuming from the start. So we're assuming that the typhoon tracks will not change substantially in the future. The only thing that will change is the typhoon intensity and that the um, distribution of typhoons throughout the year will <coughs> change. So we, we won't have typhoons in January, it will still happen in. August, September, and everything like that. And we're assuming that a wind which is higher than 30 knots leads to a, like, a stop of human activity. And this is quite typical in, in the case of ports. So, normally, many ports have in their regulations that when winds are to exceed 30 knots, the port will just stop. And basically, the crane will stop, the, some ships will have to even leave the uh, port and go into the sea because of damage. And okay, we're assuming that the population will not change so much. So yeah, uh, the methodology we're using is a Monte Carlo simulation, and we're not randomly generating the typhoon tracks. This is this would be just too too computer intensive for the for this kind of simulation. And so we're just randomly picking a typhoon track from the historical uh, about eight or nine hundred typhoon tracks that we have, well tropical cyclone tracks that we have, and we're just altering the maximum wind speed and the area of the typhoon. So in this graph, as you can see, is in the light red. Uh, but this actually just shows the 50 knot radius how it, it will increase from the light red to the darker red. So basically, a greater, a great, a greater um, amount of area would be uh, influenced by the typhoon. And this is the typhoon of the value in 2004, which is a very famous typhoon um, <coughs> which caused great damage in Japan. So, where do we obtain the probability distribution functions? We obtain them from the results of the and Play Act. And here you can see. Um, of the, this is a graph obtained from them in the top uh, right hand corner showing the distribution of maximum wind speeds uh, in the year 2005. And then we developed uh, some sort of relationship between the maximum wind speed and the area of the typhoon. And um, we're not too sure exactly how this is affected. This is an area of controversy to some extent. So we're assuming also different values. We're doing different scenarios, but the typhoon becomes much bigger or a little, little bit bigger. And okay, another main point of all a simulation is there is a relationship between Japanese GDP and the port infrastructure. So these two authors, Kawasaki and Loi, uh, Kawakami and Loi, in 2004 established, as you can see here, a relationship on the, on the left side between the growth in Japanese port infrastructure and the Japanese GDP. So they go more or less hand in hand. You have to build more ports, you have more GDP in Japan because the, the economy is uh, export driven. So as you can see now in the current economic crisis, the Japanese exports are drying up and GDP is going down. So what kind of results do we get? Well, in this graph you can see a few different Japanese ports, the port of Naha in, in Okinawa and the port of Yokohama, which is where I live. 
you can see the difference, the expected difference in year 2005, in, uh, between the year 2005 and, and what you could expect for institute. Really, the course of uh, NASA, you could expect in August um, 2005 to lose about 60 hours a year on average, and nowadays you could expect to lose about 50. So you have a significant increase in the amount of downtime. Um, so, because of this, then you're going to have to build bigger ports and invest even more in at um, least in, in ports in the future to, to avoid these bottlenecks that would be created by this increase in downtime. So, basically, four different scenarios depending on economic growth and the relationship between the maximum wind speed and type in the area. And what you get is that the, the Japanese government or the Japanese Ports Authority will have to spend between 30 and 120 extra billion yen on top of what they would already normally spend due to economic growth to um, mitigate the spot for, this, for these effects of greater type of areas affecting uh, their regions. And if they didn't spend this, you could expect the GDP to fall by up to 3.4%. And this is because of these bottlenecks that would be created in the export of goods. So another result um, from the simulation is how increasingly, it's not that the type, we're not assuming that the type of tracks are moving north, we're just saying that the effects of these type of tracks, uh, of these type of will move further north because greater these cycles will be greater in areas, so therefore, even a typhoon that is reaching the bottom of the country now, it will affect uh, maybe that before it wasn't reaching Yokohama, now the effect will reach Yokohama, for example. So, how somebody you get more, more out of those further north in the country. And you can do, use this also to, um, to, to try to estimate what would be the cost directly to the Japanese GDP. So, this would be how much time, you, how much GDP you would lock, lose these people because of factories being closed, work is not going to factories and something like that. So you would expect um, really an average that by 2025, your GDP would be 0.15% lower because of this increase in downtime. It's not, not really dramatic, but it is well, significant to some extent, I suppose. So in the future, more people will be staying out of work, more factories will be closed more, more at a time because of, more, because of um, bigger typhoons. So the summary, um, uh, Monte Carlo simulation can give you an estimate, an expected estimation downtime of um, for uh, the area of 30, for the 30 and 50 um, miles per hour wind typhoon. This simulation is based on a number of assumptions, and these assumptions are quite important to the, to the final result. This could result of, of, of a loss of, um, of, an, of um, having to spend up to another 120 billion yen, which is about 1 million euros, not that dramatic, I would say, to improve these effects by the year 2005. And the effects, the indirect losses to the Japanese economy as a whole, is only 15% in the year 2005 due to downtime. So that's it. Thank you. Now we can keep going. Yes, and um, when we started doing this simulation, um, simulation, we didn't really know what to do with the population because, of course, as you say, the population in Japan is forecasted to, to decrease. But um, if I start to do something like that, somebody could say maybe in the future Japanese people will have to start having more children, have more children, or maybe there will be uh, any more immigrants that will come into the country. So it's. It's a very difficult question to really put in our So all scenarios or assumptions is that the Japanese population will stay the same. It is based on the official uh, projection by the Japanese government? No. no. It's just... I'm the same question. Yeah, hello. I'm Klaus Altmark from uh, Oldenburg University. Um, I wonder, uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit in some seconds <laughs> you have about on how you relate the general GDP loss to the port downtime. <laughs> I guess this relates also to, to, to Stefan's presentation with direct and indirect um, mm -hmm. losses and how you approach that. Yeah. If you have an increase in, uh, in the number of down, in the number of hours that the, the port is closed, you have to build a bigger port, right? So at the end of the month, you shift the same number of cars out. So your port has to be bigger. If you don't build that bigger port, you can ship less cars, which means your GDP is going down because your economy is focused on exports. Yeah. 